for infrastructure companies, there was a time when you were the flavor of the season. Everything was about infrastructure. In the yeah, last two years, yeah. that whole story has been rewritten. I think from Jan 2008 to now, your market cap has fallen by 78% in the markets yeah. right now. Now, what is the road ahead? If you want to raise money for the existing projects, would would uh, you know getting private equity participation be a, a way out? You've done that with HCC concessions with Xanders. I mean, is that the way out? Or See, some of it, of some of the way out is that. But the basic point is, until the policy framework and policy management changes, we are going to still have a problem. How to manage yourself in the immediate crisis? People will look after themselves in some form or the other. But how far can the immediate crisis start hurting the overall economy? I mean, it, it's not <coughs> seeming very immediate right now. It seems as though it's going to possibly get worse before it gets better. Well, sometimes people feel that it should get worse faster, so it'll get better faster. But when you talk about this crisis, as you said, pos things are possibly going to get worse before they get better. Yes. And uh, we're possibly going towards, you know, all of this culminating into a larger problem. How do you deal with the situation? See, already the slowdown is affecting employment in terms of uh, unemployment not getting absorbed. A certain amount of people losing jobs will now begin. And when this starts happening in a bigger way, it will come onto the street. And when it comes onto the street, you'll start feeling it. You know? So I'm not predicting anything. I'm only telling you the logical conclusion of where it's going. Like a flight that's left Delhi, we know more or less, barring unforeseen circumstances, when it'll land in Bombay. So that thing is likely to pan out now. It's only when this starts happening that the government will realize that things have got out of hand and some measures will start. In the meantime, I think a lot of companies will have to go in for debt restructuring. A lot of companies will have to be assisted and aided in terms of doing this. But final thing will come only when government changes its policy framework to a more improved policy bringing in reforms, bringing in a serious promise that some of the commitments of reforms will be kept. And I think if you see some movement on that, then the confidences will return. And once the confidence is returned, interest rates, I don't see how we can lower them so quickly. But the promise of lowering interest rates a certain... Uh, but now they're talking of a possible another round of hikes before it comes down. Do we have elbow room for that, given the situation right now? And would that create I think a debt kind of a trap I would, for companies? I would, I would ask the, the monetary policy decision makers to weigh this with serious caution. Because it is important for them to understand that it is not... It's going to hurt investment more than anything else. Second is, even though the gap between the interest rates in India and the rest of the world growing, we're still not getting monies flowing into the country. This is a question. Then we got volatility in the currency market. There's no reason for Indi Indian rupee to lose its value the last two months, but it did. So there's a lot of volatility, a lot of uncertainty in the global economies as well. This sits on top of our own inefficiencies created by us. So I think it's time that we understand that the global atmosphere and storm is big and that we should be prepared for it. And for preparation, we can only look after ourselves and start taking some corrective measures, some, uh, some loosening of the financing and availability, quickly creating reforms of debt markets, uh, goods and services tax, uh, company law, the new bill, a whole host of such direct tax code, and the whole host of small administrative reforms for the confidence to return. You will be surprised how much confidence makes a difference. And while everything looks bleak, and I see a medium-term trouble in almost every infrastructure company and beyond, even some consumer companies are going to get hurt. What can I say? I mean, uh, I have seen a thousand things that were never going to happen in India happen. So I'm sure that this too shall pass. But of course, it requires effort. But this is a big step back according to you, it's I, despite the fact that we've had so many policy announcements over the last couple of uh, uh, weeks and months. It is you've a setback. A new it mining is policy, a new manufacturing policy, et cetera, et cetera. You think the reform agenda has, has taken a back seat? No, it has. It has not been a, if you ask the government, they'll say, no, it hasn't taken a back seat. But it certainly has slid down their agenda, or at least they're not able to uh, tackle it hard enough. Last question, how far will you take the battle for Lavasa? It's a great project. 
and how far will you take it? And I how far are you willing to fight for it? Many, this is my country. This project was for this country. It meets an extraordinary need of this country. I will take it to whatever it takes to make it happen. Even if it is a question of losing money and time and effort behind it? Even if it means people are making us lose money. It's not happening on its own. And what about your investors? You think they're going to stick, stick by you? The project is big enough. And the project has good returns at the end of it. And the project fulfills a big need, therefore it will remain in demand. So you'll fight for it? Yes. Okay. Mr. Gulabjian, thank you thank so much for joining us.